Bonfire is a board game that I started creating in January 2020. I had the idea to create a board game that works like a survival video game, as there are many out there. They usually work the same way, the player has hunger and thirst, which they have to take care of, while dealing with life-threatening surroundings. To put this into a board game, I give every player a water, food and health bar, like in a video game. Walking was determined by rolling dice, and instead of running away from danger, you would have to face it to get what you want. The goal was based on the idea that the players are on different parts of the map. They must work together to reach the goal, which in this case is to build a bonfire on top of a mountain where they can wait for help. After thinking of the game mechanics, I made sure to get a test game started as soon as possible. After all, I wanted to make sure that the game doesn't only make sense theoretically, but it is actually playable. I started by creating the map and some of the cards. In the first test game, I also wanted to use tokens. Those were hidden around the map in caves, put upside down so you wouldn't know which tool you would get in which cave. When the game was over, I made sure to ask for reviews, tips and ideas from the players. Ancient Bunny, a very good friend of mine, said about it, It's a bit long. We discovered it's more interactive and collaborative. Working together helped the progress faster. Even though the game is basic, it is also complicated. You have to think about actions. The funny bits were great. So Jerick, someone I didn't know that well, said, The funny parts were a plus. Depending on the group, add more text to the cards. It helps the monotony of the game. I like that you had both food and water. I was torn about it first, but it's more to balance and it keeps the pressure on. I like that. He gave me the name idea Bonfire for the game, which I then took. Sadly, we couldn't get a third player for the first test game. My personal impression was very positive as well. Though I knew I had a lot to work on, I was quite impressed as to how well we played together. Changes for the next test game were that I would need more powerful cards, more cards in general, and the tokens had to become parts of the card pile. The game went way better than I had expected, giving me the perfect base to work with. The success of the first test game made me get more in-depth story-wise. Who were the characters that landed on the island? How did they get there? What island was it? From the beginning I had a pretty good idea who the characters could be. Though I decided to first focus on what was more important for the main board game, which was the design of the island. I wanted the game to play in modern times. All characters were on a plane which crashed in the ocean and who got swept up on different spots on the island. Asking my sister who has studied aerospace engineering and her husband who works for airlines, I determined that the best excuse as to why the plane went down was human error. But which island did they land on? If it was an already existing island, they probably would have found someone living there. Instead I wanted to make sure it was an unexplored island. I decided that a good place for my made up unexplored island would be in the Azores offside of Portugal. I had a few islands I could study a little bit and base my island on, giving it a cleaner and more believable look. For this I looked at a study from the site researchgate.net called Natural Zonal Vegetation of the Azores Islands, Characterization and Potential Distribution, released in Phytocineologia in September 2016 and noted down how I wanted to build up my island. This will be most important for the cards when it comes to which animals attack or are eaten and for the design of the island to make it fit in better into the Azores. For now though, I was able to readjust the island, draw it in more detail and use it as a base for the final design. I added more cards and adjusted the rules as well. Then the second test game was played. Again, the reviews of the second game turned out not just very positive, but especially very helpful for further development. I was on the right track, the adjustments became smaller details and the ideas became broader for future add-ons. The adjustments between the second game and the third game were mostly rule-based. One of the toughest decisions was to figure out if you lose one water or food point after gaining a water or food card. We then settled on the rule that yes, you do lose a point even if you got a card that turn. The boat was overworked, making it possible to carry several players who all gain the same water cards until they are at the other side of the lagoon. I also edited the cards to be more powerful, turning plus two water cards into plus four water cards for example. The two paths and the water have become a single one. After the second test game, most changes were in the designs. Though the players really enjoyed the game again, there were a lot of interesting ideas gathered that may be implemented in the future. For now, my main goal was to make the game shorter and more enjoyable. The biggest issue for me was that there was a lot of walking between food and water points and not enough working on the actual goal, which is probably what made the game so much longer and made it feel a lot more monotonous. After some of the rule changes and work on the design, I decided to already play another test game. 
This time I wanted to see if the small rule changes already made a difference in the time and I wanted to get more opinions since I felt like the game was a lot closer to actually be played without my help than before. The third reviews gave me a lot of helpful tips and ideas. We played around a lot in this game with the rules and changes which I will implement in the next test game. Future changes will be for example another food point on the map since the two are not enough. The die will become a d10. The forest and cave work by dice throwing. 1 to 2 ice and you get nothing, 3 to 8 and you get 1 wood or stone, 9 to 10 and you get 3 wood or stone. This is where my journey ended for now. I will keep developing the board game because even though it seemed like a fun idea for the application, I actually had a lot of fun and a large interest in creating it. I already have a functioning version uploaded for the tabletop simulator on Steam, but I will keep updating it in the future. I hope you enjoyed my presentation of the game as much as I enjoyed developing it. Can you walk on, onto a life card right now? Yeah. Living dangerously. You know, if you get the minus one, then you're dead. I could be. Yeah, and I'm That's the exciting the game. bit. That's, you, that's he it. Get that's a minus the exciting two. bit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he becomes a zombie. And he'd be extra dead. Extra crispy. Oh my god! Yeah! Uh, that flower tasted as good as it is beautiful. GG. Yay! GG.